This is a 6 year old Samsung. But what you're looking at isn't Samsung's One UI. This is Android 16, styled like Google's newest Pixel. The animations, the control panel, even that haptic feedback, all running right here on hardware from 2019. This one's lost its knocks, its features, its original skin, yet somehow it feels modern again. There are quirks, sure, but also some seriously cool surprises. In this video, I'll show you how this phone now looks more Pixel than Pixel itself, the good, the bad, the broken, and how you can do it yourself, step by step. And it's a lot easier than you think. You know, watching this new pixel style quick settings, or you can say control panel, actually makes me appreciate Samsung's front design all over again. Like this thing's 6 years old, and yet it somehow still looks cleaner and more modern than many of the new phones. It honestly feels like that expressive design was made for this Samsung, not the Pixel. It fits better here. The animations, the layout, it just looks like it belongs. I only wish I could slap Material 3 Expressive directly from Google on this. Because man, that would have completed the whole look. Now yeah, it's trying its best to look like Pixel UI and sometimes it actually nails it, while at other points it's just not quite there. And before we go any further, I challenge you. Just try to ignore that black spot on the screen and the fact that two of these cameras are blurry and the other one straight up doesn't work. I dare you. Anyway, design wise, it's got that pixel style settings app and control panel but it's not as consistent as what you get on an actual pixel. Understandable though, it's AOSP at heart. One thing I didn't expect, it has an always on display with a wallpaper background. Yeah, to further drink the battery. Which by the way is already at like half capacity on mine. But surprisingly, overall battery life does feel a bit better than stock. Probably because all those useless apps and background junk are gone. The highlight for me though is this evolver section. This is where you realize how customizable this ROM really is. You've got settings for theming, lock screen, status bar, quick settings, power menu, basically every corner of the UI is tweakable. And that elastic -y notification dismissal, you know, when you swipe one and it kind of pulls the one above and below with it, yeah, that's here. With proper tactile feedback and that Material 3 expressive feel. But when you open recents, nope, still the old version. No haptics, no expressive motion. That part didn't make the cut. Volume controls, still from older Android versions. They pop up on the opposite side when you press the button. Though, there's a toggle to move it to the left side if you want. Visually, most of the design cues you'll see are from Android 16, not full-blown Material 3 expressive. But you do get little sprinkles of that newer design language on top. Plus, Evolution X's own touches, like that status bar customization. You can literally change the icons, make them look like iOS or One UI, it's up to you. You can even pick a custom logo, move stuff around or just go wild experimenting. I love this loading status. It's such a cool little touch. Now yeah, on paper, the Geekbench scores are a bit lower than stock. But honestly, day-to-day -day usage doesn't show it. In fact, it feels faster than before. Probably because it's lighter now and everything just opens snappier. I even gamed on it. No major battery drain, no overheating, just smooth. Which is saying a lot for a phone this old. Now as you'd expect, the device isn't certified with this ROM. But here's the funny part. Since it's not rooted, you can still run your banking apps without any issue. If you actually want to make it certified, you will need to root it. But the moment you do that, goodbye banking apps. Then again, would you really use banking apps on a custom ROM? Hmm. Fingerprint sensor works perfectly. Face unlock also fine. No issues there either. But yeah, once you install a custom ROM, say goodbye to Knox. Once that fuse is stripped, even if you go back to the original firmware, Knox integrity is gone for good. Cameras, there are two apps pre-installed. And yes, you can install Gcam too. But you don't get Samsung stock features like portrait mode or 4K at 60fps. The home screen, app drawer and customization options are mostly from stock Android 16. You even get an app lock so you can secure individual apps if you want. But I couldn't find the private space feature in it. The at a glance widget here opens a browser based weather app. But it also comes with a Pixel weather app pre-installed. Connectivity wise, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi work flawlessly on mine. The rest, you guys will have to report back once you try it. And yes, the S Pen works too. Of course, you lose the Bluetooth functions like the shutter button and there's no Samsung Notes integration. But you can still jot down things in Google Keep. And it works just fine. Now coming back to that Evolver section. This is a whole world in itself. So if you plan to install this ROM, I'd say dive into it yourself. And maybe drop a word of appreciation to the Evolution X developers for keeping this old phone alive and so fun to tinker with. 
Now the installation process is actually pretty simple, but there are a few things you need to make sure of before we start. First, you should have the Exynos variant of the Note 10 Plus, and it needs to have an unlocked bootloader. Don't worry, we'll go through this together. Before anything else, back up everything on your phone. This process will completely wipe your device, so make sure nothing important is left behind. Once your backup is done, connect to Wi-Fi and check for any pending system updates. Make sure your phone is running Android 12 with One UI 4.1. Now go to settings, about phone and tap on the build number 7 times to unlock developer options. Go back to the main settings menu, open developer options and enable OEM unlocking and USB debugging. Alright, now turn your phone off completely. You'll need a few files the ROM and recovery files from the Evolution X website. You can also find their installation guide there. 2. Samsung USB drivers. 3. SDK platform tools. 7-zip and the Auden tool. Install Samsung USB drivers, Android SDK platform tools and 7-zip installer. Once that's ready, take your recovery file and use 7-zip to convert into a .tar format, just like I'm showing you here. Now take your phone again, press and hold volume up plus volume down together and connect your USB cable. You'll see a warning screen. If your bootloader is already unlocked, press volume up once, but if it's not, press and hold volume up until you see the unlock confirmation screen. I'm going to unlock mine here, so I'll just press volume up again to confirm. And with that, the phone will reset itself, which might take a few minutes and you'll land back on the welcome screen. Once you get to the home screen, connect to Wi-Fi Check for updates one last time and confirm that OEM unlocking and USB debugging are still turned on. Perfect. Now turn the phone off again. Next, once more, press and hold volume up plus volume down and connect the USB cable. This time when the screen appears, press volume up once. You should now be in download mode. Back on your PC. Open Auden and make sure you see the blue indicator. That means your phone is properly connected. In the options tab, uncheck auto reboot. Now in the AP section, browse and select your recovery.tar file. Once that's set, press start. Within a few seconds, Auden should display pass. And that means you're good to go. Now grab your phone and press all buttons together. Volume up, volume down and power. As soon as you see the screen turns black, release volume down. And when you see the Samsung logo, release power but keep holding volume up. That will boot you straight into Evolution X recovery. Alright, so here the touchscreen doesn't work, which sucks but that's fine. We'll use the volume keys to navigate and power button to confirm. First, let's do a factory reset. Navigate down, confirm and done. Now go back and select apply update, apply from ADB. That's exactly where we want to be. Back on your PC, rename the ROM file to something short like evolutionx.zip and move it into your platform tools folder. Inside that folder, right click and select open in terminal. Now type this command adb sideload evolution x dot zip then hit enter. The installation will start immediately. It will take around 5 minutes so just sit back for a bit. Once it's done, you'll see a confirmation both on your PC and your phone. Now pick up your phone and select reboot system now. The first boot might take 2-3 to three minutes but once it's done, congratulations! You're now running Android 16 on your Note 10 Plus. If you try this out, let us know your experience in the comments so others can learn from it. That's it for this one. My name is Mubashir, you're watching Hainastic and I'll see you in the next video.